Welcome back to another no-code video on APIs. Now, hot in the heels of our last video where we talked about making requests, we've also talked about documentation, etc. I wanted to make another video that talks about webhooks. Now, we're going to be back in Zapier. Um, I really like Zapier as probably the simplest way out there to make a webhook. And if you can't remember what a webhook is, um, it's kind of the opposite of an API call. When you make an API call, you are phoning somebody uh, to make some sort of request and they're giving you information back. Um, with a webhook, it is essentially a phone number that you put out there and anybody who needs to send you information can do it. So, you know, just as a great example, uh, and actually one that I guess we're going to build here today, is if you had an you know, a t-shirt e-commerce store and you wanted, let's say you had a third party, uh, a friend or a partner who was going to have their own website to sell your product, you know, they could have an API so that whenever they make an order, they can send that order information over to you and you can fulfill it. It's a little bit essentially about how uh, Amazon works. You know, if you're a seller on Amazon and you're selling your products there, Amazon have the interface, you set up an API uh, webhook and as soon as Amazon get an order, they send over the information to you. That comes into your system, it does whatever you want it to do, and you can take it from there. And if you're not an, um, already doing that, you know that's a good example of the kind of thing that you can do with no code. You know, If you're selling something or doing something like that where you've got to use someone else's interface, typically you can pull the information by webhook or by API out and then take actions on it. So to kind of sum that up, a webhook is a trigger that we set up and when that trigger is hit, it kicks off some other sort of workflow to do various different bits and pieces. So what we're going to do, um, if you remember from last time uh, when we talked about databases and we went through our whole databases pillar, we had this database here and it was made up of customers, orders and inventory. And what we're going to attempt to do is set up a webhook with Zapier. When information is sent to that uh, Zapier webhook, we are going to push it straight into Airtable here. Um, and we're just going to push that information in and, uh, you know, we're not going to make it any more complex. You know, with a webhook, you can have as many steps as you like, but I just want to show that kind of coming in. Now, Airtable is a bit like Webflow. It's got its own API. If you go to help and go to API documentation on your own Airtable, it will uh, spring it up. It will show you not only um, the the kind of documentation but it's also going to show you actual examples from your own database it's really really cool but let's take a look at zapier first of all so we're going to hit make a new zap and where we want to start this time when we load up is with our webhook so we'll start this app when another app sends a webhook so we're going to choose an event. Now you've got a couple of options here, but the one that you're looking for is catch a hook or a webhook. So wait for a new post, put or get to be sent to a Zapier URL. In other words, wait for somebody to give you an API call. This is equivalent to you giving someone your phone number and telling them to phone you. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back to Hopscotch and actually um, we're actually going to send information to this, uh, this little place. So... By default, Zapier is going to give you the entire payload of the webhook. In other words, it's going to give you um, everything that you need. Uh, one of the things that you can do is kind of pick off a child key, which means instead of getting all the information, you can pick different bits and pieces. We're not going to bother with that. It's a little bit complicated. You can mess around with it yourself, but it is a good way just to reduce the noise that you're getting um, if an API call comes through. So let's just park that in there for now. So we just park that. Let's make it a post request, actually. So we're going to park that there. Now that's our webhook URL, much like the api.webflow.com. You know, this is the one that we can send. Now, what we have not created here is an API. This is a webhook. This is for sending one specific set of information. On the other hand, an API is when you would actually build something out like the Webflow ID that's got its own resources. You can list them, you can go through them, etc. This is purely for receiving information. Um, if you want to understand how to make your own API, we've got another video on that, um, uh, kind of related to our CRUD methodology as well, so you can check that out. But a webhook is just about getting certain bits of information. So, let's set up our, our, our webhook. So we've got our URL, we're going to continue now that that's set up. Um, we can test the trigger, so what I can do is I can just send some information uh, to that trigger. So I've already got it actually, I don't know why I'm trying to copy and paste it. Now, what Zapier will do is it will, mod it, it, it will model your webhook data based on what you send in this test. So it's telling me to come through and test it. And I'm going to delete this. And actually, uh, we can go back to using the um, 
the various different parameters that we're going to go and put. That's what I'm trying to turn off. Better put that back on and just put our brackets back in. Sorry, you won't have to do this. That's just the way I had it set up. So we can go ahead and add new parameters. Now I'm going to say, let's see what we've got in here. I tell you what, we'll add stuff to the inventory. Let's say we are a company who are, um, you know, we are letting uh, our t-shirt e-commerce store know every time we bring out a new um, item. So we're going to say we have got a item name. Uh, we'll just do that as an underscore. So we've got an item name and we're going to send through blue t-shirt. In fact, I'm going to make it red for no good reason. Uh, and then we're also going to send through the uh, uh, stock amount and that is going to be 20. So when we send this through, we are telling our e-commerce uh, t-shirt company via webhook that we have now got 20 uh, red t-shirts in store. They can put that in their database and they can go and sell it. So let's send it and see what happens. Now you'll notice there's no um, authentication token or anything like that set up. You can do that yourself by making them put a token in here. In fact, we'll just do that. Let's just add a token. Um, token, this is, you could give them a token, you can auto-generate it, you could save a bunch of tokens, give them out willy-nilly, however you like, and then make people put them in. So um, I'm just going to use a one-off token. Typically what you would do if you were going to put a token in like this, you don't always have to secure a webhook, but if you were going to secure it with an API key, you would probably have your API keys sitting in a database. When the request comes in, you would check the database to check that that token is in use and is okay. And if it was, you would then proceed on with the rest of your request. In practice, we're going to do it slightly differently. So we'll send that. I think we sent it already, didn't we? And there we go. So Zapier's confirm it's been, uh, confirms it's been successfully received. So if I hit test trigger, it's going to pull in uh, a few different requests that have all just been made. So request B, uh, and you can immediately see, look, there's a parameter information right there. This is live on Zapier. We have just sent this. We've got a red t-shirt. We've got 20 of them in stock. The token is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm just going to copy that and I'll show you why in a minute. If we hit continue, let's do a couple of things. Now, it's asking what is the first action that we want to take uh, based on our filter coming through. There's a few things we could do, for example, you know, we could build a workflow by using paths, which essentially means, well, if the token's there, do this, if the token's not, do that. Um, I'm going to put a filter in, and the filter will just essentially say, um, you know, essentially only continue if the token field, so we're se selecting from the hook, select the token field, um, if it exactly matches, this here. So I've just manually put this in, but this is comparing the data. So I've, I have I happen to have sent through the token 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I had sent through the token, you know, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and not the whole thing, this would filter out. So if we had continue, it will test where a sample data, your zap would have continued. Um, if I put something else in, the zap would not have continued. It would have stopped here and nothing would have happened. Um, and so, what we're now going to do is add another step. So we're going to go this time to Airtable. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I am just going to say we're going to create a new record. So we're going to create a new record on an inventory table. Now, I'm just going to pause the video for two seconds while I select my own table because what I don't want to do is accidentally show off uh, all of my other uh, tables and boards. So give me two seconds. And there we go. So I've just unpaused. Uh, you have seen the screen jump a little bit, but uh, I've now selected my no-code uh, demo base. And what you just essentially do is you pick the particular table or database, sorry, you want to use in your table, and then you pick the table. Uh, so we've got a customers, orders, inventory. Clearly that maps back to the customers, orders, and inventory. We're going to pick inventory. And look what you can do. So if we have a quick look, I've got item name, items in stock, and orders. I can update any of those fields. So I can, uh, and this is obviously creating a record, so I can immediately go in here. What's the item name? Well, let's go back to my hook and the parameters it's sent through. I can click select all options and it'll show me stock, etc. But what we want to do is pull through the item name. So what we are saying here is, you know, catch a, catch a, a hook. Um, so web hook, um, we're looking for the parameters, item name, stock, um, and the token. If the token looks correct, 
continue, if it's not, stop, that's us done. But if it looks correct, let's connect to our Airtable database and let's enter the information that was sent through. Now I've sent red t-shirt, I could equally send blue t-shirt, green t-shirt, whatever it might be. Um, let's also enter the number of items in stock, which again is coming through that API call. Now you can easily imagine, you know, imagine you're building an accounting app and you wanted uh, every time a payment was made somewhere, there's a webhook that sends information to your accounting app. You could have parameters like transaction ID, transaction name, uh, time of transaction, amount of transaction, and then you could just sit and label them into your table exactly like we're doing here. We don't want anything in order, so we're just going to leave that blank. Now, here is a moment of truth. So look, right now, we've only got no code t-shirt, white hoodie, black t-shirt, white t-shirt. Let's see what happens when we test this. So this is going to pull the information through from an API and put it into our Airtable database. And boom, there you go. Easy as that. If I want to add that to orders, I can start doing that. Boom, you've ordered it. Uh, you get an order, etc. You know, I can add that in. But in terms of just adding data to my database, in this case, adding inventory items, we've just done it. I've deliberately avoided putting in um, a, uh, uh, an order, as you can see, via the API. But there you go. And now what I've just done is put that as app live. I give that a name like, uh, you know, stock updater webhook. And if this was an online store, there you go. I've now got a way for all my, my wholesaling partners to send us new stock automatically, programmatically straight in. So that's now live and running. Let's see what happens when we start playing around. You know, all right, stock red t-shirt. Well, let's go for the blue t-shirt I said no to last time. We've only got 10 of those. The token's correct. Send it. And it's status 200, which means it's running through Zapier. And there you go. Before I even get the time to click back, it's already in the database. If I go to the, uh, if I do green t-shirt, I do five. Send that. Back. Boom, there you go, it's working, it's easy, it's accessible, you can do it. So, you know, there you have it. If you want to make a webhook, if you want to receive information, put it into your database, you can do it. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me, obviously Zapier's got a ton of other uh, triggers or databases, etc., places you can put data into. So you can really easily move data around, do whatever you like with it, and, uh, and now you're able to add your own webhooks or your own APIs to your no-code app. So enjoy that. Check out the video on actually making your own API if you want to take it a little bit further and we'll see you again soon.